Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 0046 of Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. And today, we are so privileged to have Haldora. I struggle with these names sometimes, folks. But Haldora is our guest today. She's so interesting. She's a mindset coach who's been helping people working on their mindsets and behaviors for over 20 years using hypnotherapy, neurolinguistic programming, and basic coaching. She's had a long interest in this area. She practices in her native Icelandic English, and she is currently residing in Germany with her family. So, Haldora, welcome to Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. And you are going to be so much fun and so interesting to speak to you today. Thank you for having me, Gary. It's a pleasure. Well, it is a pleasure for myself. And I really like the fact that I have a hypnotherapist on because, as you are aware, because of our pre-interview, I have a background in hypnotherapy as well. I served 37 years in, in mental health professions. And for almost 40 years now, I have been a hypnotherapist. So it's really quite exciting because you're the first hypnotherapist I've ever interviewed in a podcast. So by way of Germany, we have Haldora. Now, your practice is online, yeah, which yep. is really quite impressive in the fact that when you think of a traditional hypnotherapist, you have to be in the same room. So what do you wish you had known before you went into the online world as a hypnotherapist? I was really thinking about this question because I kind of developed into doing it online. Well, the thing is, I was living in the UK for four years. And at the moment when we were moving, my husband went to Germany a little bit earlier than I did. And I was kind of bored and I thought I need to find something to do. And I saw this kind of like taste a day of hypnotherapy. And I thought, why not? You know, I got the NLP, got the coaching and all that. This is interesting. Let's have a look. And I went to that day and at the end of the day, I asked them, you know, is this something you can do online? And they said, absolutely. And the thing is, at that moment, I thought, okay, I'm going to do this because I was moving to Germany, don't know anyone, don't speak the language. And I was just like, how, how can I, how, what can I do? So I moved to Germany. The month after I started my hypnotherapy course in UK. So I flew back and forth, back and forth. And until I qualified and, and, and I've been working online ever since with hypnotherapy, but I've been doing online seminars and workshops and, and face-to-face -face sessions for a long time. So this was kind of like interesting to know, like you said, that you can do hypnotherapy online. I was, I had the same idea that you had to have somebody, this couch and, you know, it had to be next to the person and all that, but it really, really works just as a normal setting. So I was very, very surprised. So I kind of like, when I was thinking about this question, there wasn't anything that I wished that I had known before because it just developed and I kind of just went with the flow. And I think, I, I think I'm the, that type of person. Maybe the only thing I would have wanted to do is that kind of like realizing and accepting earlier that I am really good at what I do. And I don't have to have everything figured out in the beginning and rather learn as I, as I go. And I kind of am a mixture between that because obviously when you do it online, I was a bit scared that it wouldn't work. So it's kind of like trusting the flow, trusting and go with the flow in a way. I had the pleasure of meeting Milton Erickson when I was in my twenties. And I do remember sitting in the room and he looked at me and he could tell I was so much younger than everybody else. And he says, don't worry, young man. Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly in the beginning. <laughs> and, and that's been my motto throughout life. Interesting. So there's a lot of things that don't go well in the online world. It is. What has been one of the biggest challenges that didn't go well? And what did you learn from it? Another question I struggled with because I have always had the mindset of there is no failure. There's only learning. And I've always had that. And I think that comes from my mom. She kind of gave me that attitude. And I've had to, you know, obviously there is technology. Talking about going with the flow, I've had, I've been doing sessions where the internet is cut off. 
and it's like, oh, what do you do then? And or the connection goes down and all that. But, you know, I think it's having this solution focused mindset. And that's actually exactly the, the hypnotherapy I do is called solution focused hypnotherapy. And so it's kind of like just tiny bits here and there that you can learn from things like that, that will prepare you for the next one. But I always look at, I don't like to say failure or mistakes or anything. I look at like tools. So whenever you find yourself like, okay, this didn't go as planned or not as I wanted it to go, it's all about, okay, so what can I learn from it? How can I prepare better for next time? And I, it's like a computer game. When you go through life, if you've ever played like a computer game and you know, in the first level, it's like, you have to learn how to jump. And then you finally figure that out. You can come go to the level two. And then you have to jump and it's not just jumping. You have to jump over like a big hole so you don't fall in. And you go through that couple of times and you lose your life and you have to start all over again. And then you finally get it. You go to level three. And in this level, it's not just jumping over the big hole. You got some monsters in the hole. So if you fall in, I think life is like that. So the thing is, if you fall into the hole in level three, you go back to the beginning. But because you've already tackled level one and two, you just go through it very quickly because you got the skills and you got the tools to kind of just run through it and take on the next level. Do you get what I mean? I've always held to the belief that on planet Earth, there is a place that's called central casting. And their job is to give you tests. Exactly. And when you pass the test, that test doesn't come back, but you get a new test that seems to have the tail end of the previous test and central casting just keeps sending you the right characters, the right people so that you can get through it. And when you don't make it through that test, the test comes back. It comes back in a different way. And as a person who was in therapy, I view this oftentimes like the horses on a carousel as the carousel goes around, you may want this one particular horse, but you missed it this time. Just wait, it will come back. And then you can get another chance to kind of jump on to that horse. And if somebody's already riding it, you can wait a couple more spins. They'll be off of it. And then you get your chance on that horse. I totally agree with you. And like this, the guys upstairs, whoever they are, I've looked at it like they're kind of following you around and like, all right, she seems to be doing quite good. You know, it's time for her to up her skills. Let's throw in a little bit. And I've had the attitude of every time I'm faced with something, it's a learning period and I get excited. I know it sounds really like this is how I developed kind of like my attitude is like, I'm in the beginning of learning something new. So I will always come out stronger with more tools in my tool belt to tackle anything. So it's like, and I'm not going to say that I always feel that in the beginning, because very often when we're faced with something, it kind of goes like, oh my God, why, what now, why me, all that. But when we kind of get out of that, I get excited about, so what am I going to learn from this? This is going to be an awesome experience. And it kind of gives me fire, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to show them, you know, I can do it. Just watch me, whoever they are, you know, so. I think that in terms of failure or mistakes, I think that's an attitude that I've developed many, many years ago. I'm kind of having a problem with the F word sometimes. I just, I, I know that things don't go right. I know that the greatest of plans collapse, <laughs> no matter how well you've planned them. Mm -hmm. And I also know that for everybody, there are things that are what I would know, call known unknowns, things that you don't know, that you don't know. You know, you know there are things that you know that you don't know. <laughs> then, then there comes that point where all of a sudden, what you didn't know, you now know you don't know. <laughs> but now you are going to consciously learn what you don't know. But you have to think your way through every time you're doing it because the learning hasn't become unconscious yet. And 
once you achieve unconscious, that's when you get the joy and the happiness out of doing the activity. It, it's like a child who rides a bicycle in the beginning, you know, it's got to be those training wheels and you running alongside of them as they're riding. And then one day you take the training wheels off and they suddenly can't ride the bike, even though they may never have touched those training wheels for three months on the ground. You know, it's today you finally take them off and now there's, there's no confidence anymore, but they get through that learning curve. And then all of a sudden, one day they're riding the bike consciously and you let go and they're still really conscious, but they're really upset that you let go. They start crying and you know, that, that you don't, you're not with them anymore. You're not helping them. But within a week or two, they're singing songs and riding their bicycle and they got their feet on the handlebar and you're going, ah, oh, you know, all that stuff. But they are absolutely understanding balance and speed and control and, and, yeah. and, and, and then it becomes fun. Then yeah, it exactly. becomes fun. Yeah. Then it becomes fun. And that's business. That's life. That's whatever you're doing. In the beginning, it is real mental work <laughs> because either, I mean, it's bliss until you figure out you don't know how to do that or yeah. you're not doing that right. And then yeah. all of a sudden it's the struggle of trying to get it right. And I love your, your analogy of the game. Yeah. You know, the online game, the, you know, because there is a learning process. Every step, there are learning processes. In fact, there are whole industries now where people teach the hack how to get to that level. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I kind of look at my, what I do, I kind of, you know, look at it that way. I, I'm teaching people those hacks, you know, the mindset hacks, you know, so, so you will develop those skills faster or adapt to them and all that. Because, you know, as we both know, the mind is so powerful and we can use it against us or with us. The amazing thing about the mind for me, I remember reading Earl Nightingale's speech that he once gave about the greatest secret. Mm -hmm. And he had a simple line in there. The mind does not care what you plant in it. Just like a farmer who plows a field. If they plant corn, they'll get corn. If they plant nightshade, a deadly poison, they'll get nightshade. And you have to decide what it is that you want to sow in your mind. And as they say in the Bible, as you sow, so shall ye reap. And it isn't until really when you start to look at the internet, it's a great leveling field all of a sudden in all business ventures, in all interpersonal ventures, everything. Before we always had these limitations, like you had to be able to afford a postage stamp or you had to be able to do something. There was like all these barriers before you could do something. Now you can just get online. And if you know how to use your mind, if you know how to think, if you know how to create, there is no limit. Mm -hmm. You will succeed. And ladies and gentlemen, there are so many golden nuggets in this show so far. Go get another pickup truck and load it up because th this is full of gems. I mean, we probably got diamonds mixed in with the gold today. This is just all over the place. So let me, let me ask you another question. What resources do you personally find helpful to you in helping other people along this journey? I think for me, I think my biggest, biggest asset is that I'm very curious and I'm curious about people. And another thing, I don't take myself too serious. I am constantly learning. I am constantly, and the reason I'm, I'm doing this, well, I started this is, was mainly for myself just to help me and my mindset and, and, you know, feeling better and getting better. And I'm still today constantly listening to podcasts, learning from other people, listening to lectures and reading articles and all that, because I want to know more. So I will be able to give other people more knowledge. And I don't look at myself that I know it all. Definitely not. And that's the reason I need more. I want more. I'm curious. And when I was living in UK, I worked for a while with people who are pre-diabetic. So I did like mindset courses and helping them to learn about lifestyle and mindset and all that. And I always looked at myself. I said to them, we're in the same boat. I might not be pre-diabetic, but 
I, I want to get healthier, I want to stay healthy, and uh, I want to have my mind in the right place. So we're here together. So I think that's, you know, kind of my asset is that I, I'm just like you, even though I'm helping you, I'm, I'm just, I'm human. I'm not perfect. And I think that connects people. So I think, yeah, I think that's my kind of like biggest resource asset, whatever you want to call it. Your superpower is being human. I like that. I so. yeah, yeah, I like to. Yeah. See, I think in the world, everybody, for some reason, that they're the imposter. Everybody yeah. else knows exactly what they're doing. And if people found out, if, if you could remove my mask, you'd find out that I'm really kind of naked under the mask. Yep. And I think what is beneficial is when everybody realizes everybody feels the same way and you are not an imposter. Only one person has gone through every experience, every learning that you have. Now, if you think you're done learning, you're only fooling yourself. Yeah. And I love what Tony Robbins teaches. He talk, talks about the word kanai, continuous and never Im ending improvement. We all have to get into this idea of kanai, kanai. Just no matter where you're at, you can be better. Because we're all going through these levels, like I talked about before, you know, level one, two, three, and all that. And you don't want to be like stagnant. And this imposter thing, I've dealt with it. And I still deal with it a lot. And I hear it from, you know, people around me. But I talk a lot about, so we got this like two parts of our brain, the intellectual, rational part of our brain. And then we got the primitive part of the brain. And I actually call it the drama queen. Because at least it sounds very dramatic in my head sometimes, very often though. So, and when we have this imposter thing, you know, when we feel that we don't know it all, we don't, we can't do it, we're going to mess it up and all that. That's the drama queen talking. And it's the drama queen that is the primitive brain who's there to protect you. And sometimes it goes into overdrive and wants to protect you just from everything in the world. I, I talk to my drama queen. Sounds very, I'm just like, okay, it's, it's fine. You don't need to protect me. I've got this. And that leads me into self-talk. I am a big believer in that the words that you use to talk to yourself. We all talk to ourselves. You know, if you, if you haven't noticed, you're just not mindful of it, but you definitely, we all talk to ourselves. And so choosing the words that we, that we say to ourselves can be really critical in which way you will go. And there is a study that was done. I don't remember the name of it, but it was university students that were split into two groups and one group, and there were candies and chocolates and all that like stations around the university campus. And one group was asked to say to themselves, I'm not eating candy. And the other group was asked to say to themselves, I do not eat candy. So I'm not eating candy. I do not eat candy. So the group that said to themselves, I'm not eating candy, only, I think it was, don't remember, 37 or 39% that really resisted the temptations. But the group that said, I do not eat candy, 60 something percent resist the temptations. So it's all about what you tell your mind. And we got the secretary in our brain to loads of people in our brain. <laughs> so we got this secretary in our brain that is really picking up the demands that you are telling yourself, the brain. So when you say, I cannot do it, or I do not eat candy, the, the secretary's job is to uh, fulfill that command. So if you say, I cannot do it, the secretary is going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to write that down and I'm going to fulfill that command that you cannot do it. I know it sounds so naive, but it is kind of, it is really like that. And when you say, I do not eat candy or sweets or whatever you call it, the secretary is going to say, oh, she doesn't need sweets. That's okay. So we stay away from that. So this is what I'm kind of talking about in my sessions and teaching people how just to, just by knowing this, you can gain control over your thoughts and mindset and therefore your behavior and your feelings. So just to understand how your brain is working and how you can impact how it's working or the way that you talk to yourself. And if you allow the inner critic or the drama queen just to run, you know, wild, that's never going to end well. And also visualization. 
I'm a big fan of visualization and there has been, there has been studies done on visualization and how you can impact, you know, both in sports and music. I think there was a guy called Pasquale Leon. He did a study on people playing the piano. So we had two groups. One group was uh, practicing like a easy exercise uh, two hours a day over five days. And they did they weekly tests, daily tests on them. And the other group was only thinking about this practice, just seeing themselves playing the piano, seeing the keyboard, seeing the fingers, and just, you know, practicing in their minds. And they obviously did some tests on them, like the other group. And the data showed that the motor cortex in the brain expanded and behaved in the same way with both groups. So one group was actually doing it while the other group was only thinking about it. So that shows us how powerful the mind is. And if we only practice how we can be in control more, at least, I think we will be more successful with our lives and especially just how we feel and how we behave and all that. I think that there's so much gold that you've just tossed out right there in in that last four or five minutes. You know, I want to segue a little bit back to the imposter syndrome because there's a lot of people that say to themselves, well, nobody's done it before, or I've not done it before. And there's a, there's a legitimate fear. Yeah. But what I also know is that most of the people in the world know about the iPhone. But what I think is really interesting is they forget that before 2008, there was no iPhone. When Steve Jobs stood up and showed the world his vision for the mobile phone, the cell phone, and he basically said, this is what we're going to call the iPhone. Now, before you could do a few things on it, you could even access the internet a little bit and get messages and things. But all of a sudden, this guy was showing an iPhone that had more computational power than any spacecraft NASA ever sent into space that you could have in your phone. And the world went crazy. They told you when the iPhone would be available in your country or your city, and people lined up for hours in the middle of the night, waiting for the store to open up and maybe not getting in until three or four in the afternoon for an iPhone. And, and they ran out of them. They were giving certificates to people for, for, for the iPhone, you know, they come and collect it, you know, when the iPhone was ready. Was Steve Jobs a fraud? No, 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 know your value. Yeah. yeah. Know your value and everything that you're talking about today, it's all mindset. When you value yourself, other people will value you too, because it will come out. It's a vibration. It yes. is something that comes out of your soul and touches hearts. And when you are congruent with who you are and your sincerity, the heart language comes yeah. through, the people will hear it. And this is what is missing amongst a lot of people. They're afraid almost to put that out. They were told in school to stop, not to do it. And as a hypnotherapist, as a mindset coach, this is really what you're trying to get people back to is this point of tell your truth. Don't couch it. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to mix the green and the yellow vegetables together. Enjoy, enjoy the sensation, the new things that are out there. And this is what makes it so exciting in your world as, as a coach, as a hypnotherapist is the fact that people's mind, perhaps the most powerful possession they actually own, yeah. can yeah. now be harnessed and supercharged so that they can so, learn things faster. Yeah. And I think don't be afraid to be, be afraid. You know, that's a, that's a natural feeling. That's honestly, we are all afraid you know, throughout life, you know, different moments and all that. It's just that kind of, that connects us too. And I love to talk about self-compassion because that links to the inner critic and the imposter in our mind. 
So it, when we go through moments, when we are ha struggling, having a hard time, afraid, stressed, anxious, and all that, we tend to, I think a lot of people, and I used to just push it away, not showing it to anyone and especially not uh, admitting it to myself and just sweeping it under the carpet and just like saying nasty things to myself. Come on, don't be like that. Don't be a loser. Don't be weak. Don't be that and all that. But that actually doesn't help. That's going to break you more down than kind of accepting where you're at at the moment, accepting the feeling that you're feeling and just, and kind of like hugging yourself and being a good friend to yourself. What would you say to a friend who's going through hard time? Would you say that don't be weak, you know, just go through it and, you know, no, you would definitely say something like, what can I do? I know you have the strength. I know you, you got the skills. It's perfectly normal to feel the way you feel, you know? So it's like, so can you imagine um, Steve Jobs, what was going on in his mind? Do you think that was always positive? We're going to, you know, be a breakthrough company or do you think it was sometimes like, oh, what are we doing here? You know, it's so perfectly normal to doubt yourself and all that, but that's the drama queen. That's the drama queen, the primitive brain protecting you from getting hurt or looking like a fool, but it's only in our, in our, if we like a fool, what is looking like a fool? That's more in our mind. But if we would watch somebody else make mistakes, not getting it perfect, would we say, oh, you look like a fool? Now we would probably encourage that person and say, this was good. Yeah. Yeah. You will, you will, you were, you were, you know, really good. And all we would give it, give that person encouragement. And uh, because you were talking about also just earlier, if we allow ourselves to be authentic and don't have all the guards up, it will show the vibration in NLP. We learn so much about communication. I think it's only like 7%. That's the words that we use. The rest is how you carry yourself, your body, the tone of the voice, the pits, all that. But so much, so many things that, yeah, it's if you are true to yourself, if you are authentic and you, if you're not afraid to be afraid and you just step into it and you use the inner critic as a encouragement instead of tearing you down. And people will naturally want to be around you and follow you because I think we all like genuine, authentic people. Absolutely. And I think yeah, absolutely. Well, you're obviously a genuine, authentic person. How do people get in touch with you if they are feeling a residence towards you right now thinking, I'd, I'd like to hear more from her? Yeah. So, well, obviously I, I work in many different countries. So I've got my Icelandic website and my English one. And, uh, my English website is Haldora Skula, my name, dot com. Yeah. And I'm also on Instagram and Facebook under the same Haldora Skula dot com, oh. the mindset coach. So yeah. All of this will be in the show notes, folks. Please don't be crashing your cars, trying to write down information with pens and pencils. It will, will be fine. We'll have it in the show notes. So yeah. Haldora is very accessible. She's just a lovely person. Don't be afraid to contact her. That's great. Haldora, I give everybody two minutes to say whatever they want to say to the world. Your two minutes starts now. I just want to continue with the, uh, the inner critic and kind of like what has helped me and a lot of the people I work with is uh, writing what I called, excuse my language, bullshit list. And it's like to just writing a list of all the, you know, things that you're saying to yourself that are, are stopping you, all the um, limiting beliefs and all that. And it could be things like, you know, that you say to yourself, oh, I, I shouldn't do it. I don't know anything or why start because I always fail. I'm always late. I always mess things up. I can never get anything right. Is these words always and never and all that, that I like to challenge. So on the bullshit list, write everything down. And then you go through the list of each sentence, limiting belief sentence. You ask yourself, is that 100% true? 
Can you never, ever, have you ever, never, ever done anything right? Then you take these sentence, you switch it into two columns. So one is like, you know, yes, it's 100% true. And it has to be 100%, not 98 or 99. If it's 100% true that you can never, have never, ever done anything right. Okay, fair enough. But if it's not 100% true, it's a bullshit. It's a bullshit that you're telling yourself. It's the inner critic, it's the primitive brain, it's the drama queen trying to protect you. And it goes on your bullshit list. And when you go through your list and you ask those questions, next time you find yourself saying these negative limiting, you know, things to yourself, just remember to ask yourself, so is that 100% true? No. Okay. So it's a bullshit. It's just my primitive brain trying to protect me from not getting hurt or whatever. So this has helped me a lot. Just writing my bullshit list. Thank you very much. It's not hard for most people to write one. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Haldora, for being with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, there has been so much gold. Diamonds have been mixed into it. There are other valuable gems in this mine today. Just pick up all the nuggets you want. The diamonds, the rubies, the emeralds, they come along with it for free today. Enjoy. There is so much available. Haldora, contact her if you resonate with her. I just have to close the show. So thank you very much for attending Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. Thank you, Haldora, for being here. Please, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, do so and share it with somebody you know that would benefit from the messages that you heard today. Also, if you're on Facebook, excuse me, if you're on YouTube, go ahead subscribe, double click the bell so that you know every time we upload. But Haldora, thank you so much for being here and congratulations on this wonderful practice that you've developed online. Thank you for having me, Gary. It was it's absolutely my honor. It's absolute pleasure. And I'm so grateful to your friend, Berna, for telling me about you. You know, she's, yeah. she's looking forward to seeing this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you later. Bye.